to our online art exhibition. As a tribute to the lives and narratives of the comfort women, serving as a powerful testament to resilience, remembrance, and the pursuit of justice, we present you Deafening Whispers. Our primary objective is to shed light on untold stories of Filipino comfort women during the Japanese occupation in World War II. This exhibition is divided into four sections. The sections are called Tinig, Testigo, Siklab, and Kalipunan. Trigger warning! This exhibition contains sensitive and potentially disturbing illustrations and information as it explores into the real-life stories of Filipina comfort women. Viewer discretion is advised. The echoing lamentation of the past are finally emanating the gentle breeze of the day. The graves cannot talk, but with a brush stroke, a little bit of shadowing, and a presence of bold colors, they are given a voice. Through the power of art, doors that locked the Philippines' forgotten wars are painstakingly trespassed in hopes of offering an opportunity for the present to catch sight of the ill-treated women. No amount of grief will ever measure the amount of torment they have gone through. The work of art within this exhibition pay tribute to women who fought, who are fighting, and who urge to continue to fight for what they deserve. Every piece highlights different materials and techniques that were meticulously created to create the communication between the past, the present, and hopefully, the future. We will begin with the first piece called Tinig. In this section, photo walls are hung to showcase the pieces self-made by the group. The first piece is a digital artwork titled Diversity of Women by Miss Dana B. Torda. This artwork celebrates the beauty of diversity among women, portraying them with unique characteristics and backgrounds. Through its inclusive representation, it promotes empowerment and encourages appreciation for the multifaceted nature of womanhood. Next artwork is another digital painting by Ms. Trisha F. Echage that explores the trauma and resilience of comfort women during World War II. This piece is called Her Sanctuary. The artist utilized a bold color scheme of red, blue, and black to convey intense emotions through the portrayal of a woman's divided face, symbolizing the violence of her experiences as a comfort woman, and tears depicted as drops of blood. The artwork emphasizes her suffering. Third piece by Mr. Sean M. Alarcos is also digitally created and named Lingering Agony, which shows a lone woman surrounded by many hands, representing the ongoing exploitation she endured. With her tired expression and the hands symbolizing exploitation, the piece highlights the overlooked stories of Filipino comfort women during the Chinese occupation. Next is another digitally made artwork by Mr. Andre D. Galivo, named Sacred Silence. The artwork portrays a woman standing atop the graves of fallen soldiers, symbolizing the silence suffering of comfort women during wartime. It depicts their sacrifices, uncertainties about the future, and possibility of their experiences remaining unknown. The piece suggests a resilience spirit among these women, despite enduring suffering and confusion about their struggle. Fifth in order is The Shattered Innocence by Ms. Zach V. Pinla. This acrylic painting depicts the shattered experiences of sex slavery victims during World War II, symbolized by shades of red, black, and blue. Recorded testimonies from Filipinos who suffered as a comfort woman vividly narrates their struggles, while overflowing blood from the woman's reflected chest in the mirror and a bandage across her silhouette signify enduring trauma and desires for justice. The artwork is digitally made by Miss Megan C. Carlos. The piece is called Talulat ni Maria, which symbolizes the resilience of women who endured the horrors of being comfort women during the Japanese regime, portrayed as flowers plucked from peace into misery. Despite their trials, they stand as beacons of strength protected by thorns and radiating beauty amidst life storms. Next, we have here Testament in Red made by Mr. Gabriel I. Dimakulangan using colored pencils on paper. The artwork features a blindfolded woman gesturing in silence, symbolizing the silent suffering of wartime victims, while red stripes in the background represents Japanese oppressors. This serves as a testament on the injustice endured by comfort women during the Japanese occupation a reminder of their harrowing experiences that should never be forgotten. Next artwork is made by Miss Jade M. Lumalang. In what media, the aftermath illustrates the dispute of comfort women after being sexually harassed by Japanese men, capturing the emotions of Filipinos who experience this tragedy. The artwork showcases the troublesome task of illustrating a woman's face, rendering emotions they can't let escape. 
against a dark background representing the repression and oppression encountered during those times of trouble. Another digital artwork by Miss Kate Q. Hila is Tormented Flesh. This piece portrays a Filipino woman sexually harassed during World War II. Her torn clothes revealing delicate parts of her body, while the title Flesh refers to the torment endured by comfort women at the hands of the Japanese. The white faces symbolize the universal nature of such inhuman acts, set against a textured background in the dark shades of blue and red, emphasizing the woman's flight and shedding light on the hardships faced by the comfort woman. Field Sorrow is watercolor on paper by Miss Trista D. Pineda. This artwork portrays the silenced anguish of 1,000 Filipina comfort women subjected to sexual slavery during World War II, with a grieving woman wearing a blindfold symbolizing their hidden suffering and embarrassment. Through the metaphor of the blindfolded woman in traditional attire, the painting reflects the survivor's decade-long fight for reparation against historical injustices. Last piece to conclude the teenage section is a digital artwork by Miss Julia I. Bacolod. Her work is called Echoes of Silence, inspired by the harrowing plight of Filipino comfort women during World War II. This artwork confronts the brutal reality of wartime sexual slavery, urging acknowledgement and remembrance of these forgotten victims in pursuit of justice and healing. Let us now move on to the second part of our exhibit where we showcase living testimonies about comfort women and their hardships during the Japanese period. First and foremost, the statue is entitled Filipina Comfort Woman Statue. This two-meter high bronze statue depicting thousand Filipinas who suffered sexual slavery during World War II was created by artist Jonas Rosses and unveiled in December 2017. However, it was removed just four months later in April 2018 by the Department of Public Works and Highways, supposedly for a drainage improvement project. This explanation faced criticism, particularly as Japan had expressed discontent about the statue. The incident has become a national issue, highlighting the call for justice by comfort women and the importance of preserving collective memory of this tragic history. And here we present this photo collage, where we can see a collection of pictures featuring various Filipino comfort women. Each photo captures the faces of these brave women who endured difficulties from the past brought by this cruel world. Through this photo collage, we want to honor this strength and acknowledge your sufferings that have often been overlooked. May it stand as a reminder of their resilience and may the voices of this woman be heard in a society marked by justice. For our last section for the Tastiga section, here we present personal experiences of the victims. For our first victim, named Maria Rosa Henson, she was often referred to as Lola Rosa or Nana Rosa. The first Filipina to publicly come out as a comfort woman on September 18, 1992. In 1942, at the age of 15, Nana Rosa endures being raped and was later forced into becoming a comfort woman for 9 months. In 1992, she became the first Filipino woman to publicly unveil the hidden lives of Filipina comfort women. Nana Rosa's courage inspired over 50 Filipino women to share their stories leading to a 1993 class action lawsuit against the Japanese government by victims. The lawsuit sought a formal apology and inclusion of Japanese wartime atrocities and Japan's history books, alongside monetary reparations. Second is Telita D. She was forced to spend three weeks locked in the garrison in Talisay Negros Occidental, where she was repeatedly abused. On her first night being locked in the garrison, she was already raped by the soldiers. She narrated that when she tried to fight back, she was grabbed by the ear and knocked unconscious. Narcisa Claveria She was only 12 years old when she was forced to endure the atrocity of the Japanese soldiers for three months. She was able to witness her father being tied face down to the post of their house after being unable to answer the questions of the Japanese troops. She said they skinned him like a water buffalo. Her mother was raped. Two of her brothers were forced into labor and the other two were killed. Along with her sisters, Emeteria and Osmenia were taken into the garrison in Abra. Lola Isang was separated from her siblings as she nursed an injury. As we move on to our third section, Sea Club, here we present a photo collage made by our own artists that depicts people who became one of many to help our comfort women to conquer during their trials. The first photo collage of Remedios Ginto Gomez Paraiso, also known as Commander Liwayway, presenting a summary of her interest and her affiliation with the Hukbalahap. 
It highlights her passion for pageantry and her iconic red lipsticks which she wore during battles. The sun additionally symbolizes her code name, the YY. Next is a photo collage that features Dr. Guidelia M. Pablan alongside nurses Carmen Lanot and Bruna R. Calvan, also known as Pataan's Angels. This collage integrates their experiences as medical professionals, including the Nipah hat visible in the background, which they turned into makeshift hospitals to treat civilians and soldiers in hiding. Aside from that, one can also see in the picture the quinine they once secretly used to treat malaria. Our last piece for our sick club section is a photo collage that highlights the religious background of Maria Agrippina Cabulada, who was a nun by incorporating an image of a church and a cross. However, aside from her religious role, she had previously worked as a spy. Despite transitioning from being a spy to becoming a nun, she continued to be helpful. We have now reached the final section of this exhibition, Kalipunan. Here, you will find a photo collage inspired by various organizations dedicated to raising awareness and assisting survivors. Also, we explore backgrounds of some of the organizations related to the subject. The Malaya Lolas, or Free Grandmothers, as translated in English, is a group of former World War II comfort women that demand reparations from both the Japanese and Philippine governments for their sufferings. Despite dwindling in numbers from 90 to around 30, they persist in seeking justice through legal actions, including a lawsuit in Tokyo for an official apology and compensation. Despite setbacks such as dismissal by Philippine Supreme Court in 2009, they remain resolute in their pursuit of state-sanctioned acknowledgement and restitution. Lila Pilipina is another organization established for the victims of Japanese sexual slavery. Lila Pilipina, also known as Liga ng Mga Lolang Pilipina, was founded on June 25, 1994. Its volunteers put a lot of love into their work and it would mean a lot for the organization to have more people aware of what they stand for. Together, they aspire that victims' stories will be protected, prevent false historical accounts, and increase recognition of the past. Again, Lila Pilipina. The following sketches are made by the members of Malaya Lolas. The first sketch is hand-drawn by Lola Lita Vinuya. She pictures people carrying things in their arms and on their heads. It might look like a pastoral scene at first, but it actually portrays Japanese soldiers making girls carry bags of stolen goods to the Red House. Second and last drawing is created by Lola Emilia Mangilit. She drew pictures of men with guns and a house used as a garrison by Japanese soldiers. Inside the house, she sketched two beds on one side, people lined up on the other, and girls hiding underneath. In the sky, there was a plane flying, and on the ground, she drew a gray carabao covered in red scribbles. Everything was a mess of black marks portraying their village being burned down. As we conclude this online art exhibition, let us carry forward the stories, voices, and struggles of those who have briefly shared their experiences. May the subject of this exhibition inspire us to advocate for justice, equality, and empathy in our communities and beyond. Once again, this is Deafening Whispers. Thank you for joining us on this journey of discovery and reflection. Together, let's continue to honor the past, shape the present, and envision a brighter future for all.